Hi, my name is Brayden Wagstaff. I'm a technician here at Arc Electronics, and I'm going to walk you through how to use ROS2 and PX4 together um, in order to simulate a drone in offboard mode. And we're going to control that with, uh, with keyboard controls. And this is without the need for a Q ground control. And also, we're going to run this all from one launch file. And if any of that is something you don't know how to do and you want to know, well, hopefully this tutorial is where you're going to find it. This tutorial is designed for people who have little to no experience with ROS2 or PX4. So if you're new here, this is the video for you. And if you know what you're doing with ROS2 and PX4 and you just want a uh, nugget of information, look at the um, bookmarks. That's the word. Look at the bookmarks down below. You should be able to find what you want. Now, this example is a derivative off of someone else's work. His name is Jayong Lim, and he did a lot of great stuff on how to send um, position set points uh, from ROS to PX4 in order to control a quad. If you're interested in that, I would recommend checking out his GitHub. So you'll see remnants of his work in what we have. Small disclaimer. Um, but what I couldn't do with his stuff is I wanted to be able to control the UAV from, from the keyboard, uh, from controls, and I couldn't do that uh, with his stuff. And I also wanted to be able to send velocity set points. I wanted to say, go up at this rate, and I wanted it to do that. Um, and so that's what this was figuring out. Um, I also wanted to be able to run it without QGC. That's Q ground control. And I wanted to simplify it because <laughs> if you know anything about ROS2 and PX4, you have a thousand different terminals open. So hopefully uh, the script that I've written to run this all from one launch file uh, will help you a lot. You should be able to take that and change it to what you need. So jumping right in, uh, you need to get PX4 and ROS on your machine. And I just have a vanilla version of Ubuntu on here and we're, gonna, we're just gonna start from the beginning like you've never done any, any of this before. So you're gonna copy this code, put it into your terminal, make sure that you're at, uh, you're at the root and you're gonna run that and you're gonna clone PX4 all the way into this. Okay, now that that's finished, the next step is to install ROS2. I didn't put all the steps into the tutorial, I just linked us to the ROS2 wiki, which has a lot of information. I really recommend spending some time on there. We're, we're gonna control click on here and uh, we're just gonna drop in everything that they tell us to. Okay, so when you get to this part right here with the sourcing the setup, the setup script, um, we can run that in here. And what this is doing, this is important to understand about ROS, is this is sourcing ROS basically in this terminal. If you run ROS commands without having run this in there, they won't work. And you might say, oh, I have to run that in every terminal. Yeah, you do, kind of stinks. The way around it though, is if we go to our bash RC, uh, you go here and you click on show hidden files and you want this dot bash RC. You're gonna open that up, scroll to the very bottom and you're gonna just paste this in there. The source, optrasumbl, setup.bash. Should work great. Uh, now you won't have to run that script every time you open a new terminal because this dot bash RC is what runs every time you open a new terminal. So it's a big brain move. Okay, if we go back to where we were. Okay, so now we've installed ROS, and the next step is to install some dependencies. Um, these ones right here are what the PX4 docs uh, advise you to do, and these ones down here are ones that I've run into that if you don't have them installed, Gazebo kind of freaks out on you. So we're gonna run these as well. Okay, those are good. Next up is to build micro DDS. Micro DDS is the way that PX4 and ROS communicate to each other, and without it, they don't talk. Uh, it's basically the pipe that connects them. And so we're gonna take this and run it in here, and this might take a moment. The next step is to set up our ROS2 workspace. This repo is designed to be cloned in as a package within a workspace. If you already have a workspace set up, just clone the package in like we're about to show you. If you don't have one set up, then we will show you how to do that. But we're gonna install two different packages. One is the example that we're gonna use, and the example uses another package called PX4 Messages. So we're gonna set up our workspace. Um, I've got this code set up where if we, um, if we put that into here, let's make sure that we are 
um, in our root directory. Uh, we take this code and we paste it in. We're gonna make our workspace and we're gonna also make a source uh, folder and we're gonna navigate to there. We're gonna do a lot of stuff from this folder. Make sure that you stay in this folder when we need to be. Our next step is to clone in the PX4 messages repo. We're gonna clone that in, nice and easy. Uh, and then we're gonna clone our example in, nice and easy. And so now that we have this set up, we need to actually build the workspace. We're gonna do that with a tool called Colcon. And um, normally, we would need to run this again, but we actually already ran it when we set up ROS. And if you were really cool and big brained, then you probably uh, added that to your bash RC. Uh, so you don't need to worry about this step. But we're going to use Colcon uh, to build um, our workspace. And at least on my machine with PX4 messages, which is really big, this takes about three minutes. But the good news is, let me run that. The good news is that after you've run this in, with PX4 messages, you're never gonna change PX4 messages again, so you don't need to rebuild this. And so what you can do actually is use this version of Colcon, uh, the packages select, um, and then you can just select the, the one package that you wanna build. So if you make changes to the PX4 offboard package, then you can just build that package and not have to worry about PX4 messages. Wow, that took like twice as long for me than it should have because I'm screen recording all this, but moving on. Uh, the next step was to actually run the code. And so if we look down in here, it's all just one launch file, which is pretty cool. Um, it makes things a lot easier. It's gonna open all these different things and basically do everything for you, which is really nice. Um, but what's gonna happen is we're gonna run this um, and it will open everything and we can focus into our teleop terminal and we can control the drone. We can press the space bar to arm it and then you have the WASD and the arrow keys. Think of it like the mode two controls for a quadcopter. Um, w, w and S here, let's whoop. W and S are up and down. Uh, A and D are, are giving you the yaw left and right. And then the arrow keys are just your pointer controls like that. Um, so if you've ever flown a drone, pretty intuitive. Um, and you obviously have all the code to be able to change this to what you need, but let's run this and show you what it looks like. So we're gonna, boom. Oh, silly me. I mean, I did this on purpose. We need to run source install slash setup dot bash. We did this earlier, but that was for the main, for all of us. We also need to source um, what we just built. And so if you don't do that, as you just saw, it won't work. And there you go. On the left, this is our actual PX4 offboard node. This is the code that's doing the special stuff. And we'll go into detail on what it's doing later. Uh, so that's in the top left. The bottom left, this is our teleop node. Um, and this is where we can input our keyboard controls and actually launch our drone and do and control it. Um, up here is rviz. This is how people visualize things with ROS2 quite often. And this is gazebo. This is how people visualize things with PX4. And then right here, this is a code that's that's running PX4 and that is also running Gazebo. And this right here is micro DDS. And so what we can do is, oh, also all these commands up here, it's, they were my own debug commands when we were making this. As long as it's in the idle state and nav status four, that should be uh, that it's idle. Um, but you don't need to worry about that. But if we go to our teleop commands, we can hit the space bar and if you pay attention to the gazebo sim down here, uh, the drones actually started spinning up. And so the space bar, we actually just armed the drone. And then it, now it has gone from the arm state into the takeoff state. And if we give it a moment, it'll actually take off and then switch into offboard mode. Now it's an offboard mode. That's uh, what NAS status 14 is. Arm status two is that it is armed. And so we can actually take our commands on here and say, let's say if I, press W, uh, I will give it a vertical uh, velocity. We can bring it up, we can bring it down with S. We can, let's see, with the up arrow, we can move it forward. Um, let's say I wanna make it turn in a circle, I can hit D, give it some positive yaw, and now it's there moving in a circle. Um, say I want to change that yaw, and then make it go back, you know, it's a drone. It flies like a drone, who knew? Um, 
And interesting, interestingly enough, we can actually land this, bring it down, and then it will, um, it'll basically go back into idle mode. If we want to take off again, we'll have to um, toggle our arm off and back on again. So now it's armed. It's going to start that same takeoff process. And this is the example. It might not look like a lot, but I'm quite fond of it. <laughs> it, it did take a while to get working the way we wanted. Um, so hopefully this is useful to you. And you can use the parts of this that are important to you and use it for the things that you need. Um, let's go into a little bit more detail. Oh, it landed because it still had a negative velocity. Yeah, let's go into a little bit more detail on what's going on. Let's open this up in VS Code. Oh, actually, back up. Stop. Super important. When you close this stuff, you can't just X out of it because it will make Gazebo oh so sad. It is this terminal right here? Well, and this. If you X out of Gazebo, the GUI, the graphical interface, it will still run in the background and it's really hard to get it to close. And so the way to get around this, the way to do it right, is to just control C, close your, your terminals. Uh, it will make it run again the next time correctly. So make sure that in this terminal, especially, you control C that, then I just control C everything else and everything is closed. It all goes back, we love that. But let's open this up in VS Code. It's code and then a dot. Um, I do trust the auth authors because I trust myself. Let's take a look at control really quick. Control.py is how we get our teleop commands into ROS. Uh, it's that terminal. And honestly, I just took ROS2's teleop command package and I just stole it legally, I think, and used it for what I wanted. It still has a bunch of stuff in there that we don't need. Um, like, for example, the speed bindings and stuff like that. So it's very far from perfect but it just did what i needed um but the main thing is we if you're messing with this the thing that you need to understand is it is sending twist commands for the controls and then a boolean for the space bar that is our arm command and it's um it's sending all the commands to the offboard velocity command topic in ross and the space so the arm command over uh into the arm message topic uh, it's going to be important to understand those. Also really important to understand that it is using... Sorry, where is this? Um, right now it's using the quality of service best effort. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it right now. But just if you run into problems, make sure that your quality of service matches um, or that it's at the best effort uh, for right now. And so if we... Let's look at processes.py. This is what's doing the magic for the launch command. Processes.py is actually, um, we understand it better by looking at the launch file. Now, a lot of this was done by Jayong Lim, and I can't claim to understand all of it, but I was able to create a node uh, right here that launches processes.py. So it launches, it, it runs this Python file, and within that file, it just, oh, where'd you go? That file just, it just, it's just running some bash scripts in terminals, um, basically running through this for loop. And so it's gonna run micro DDS right here, and it'll also go into the autopilot folder and, and make and build, or it, and it'll make PX4 SIDL, and that's how we run Gazebo. If you wanted to run Q ground control, you just add a comma here and comment out this line, and it would also run Q ground control. Um, so if there's other things that you want to run within the launch file, um, updating this file is probably the way to do it. Or if you need different things to, to be made with, with Gazebo, uh, just change these commands right here. There's probably a more elegant solution. Um, and if you have one, let us know, please. Um, this is all open source. It's all collaboration. Um, but let's take a look at velocitycontrol.py. This is... Um, this is the thing doing all the magic, letting us move it around and doing all that. Um, the main things to take away from this is that it's currently running as a finite state machine. It's not the best finite state machine, but boy golly, it works. Um, 
basically we have an idle, an arming, takeoff, loiter, and an offboard state. And once you idle, you're an idle, you hit space, it'll go to arm, and then it'll jump into takeoff and loiter. And loiters, once it gets up in the air and is doing nothing, it'll switch into offboard mode, and that's when you have the controls. Um, so it's important to understand that about it. And then if you're making changes to this, it's just command loop callback. This just runs on a timer, um, basically like an interrupt. And this is a thing taking all the commands that we get and sending and publishing it to the uh, as a um, as a trajectory message. And that's the thing that is really controlling what the drone is doing. Um, but that is that. That's the example. That's what it does. And I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have suggestions, if you have questions, either put it in the comments or uh, message me on Discord. I'm in the Drone Code Discord. Uh, it's Braden Wagstaff. And if you're not in the Discord, get in there because there's a lot of knowledge in there. Anyway, have a great day.